My name is Jules Maxwell and I'm a composer and I've been working with Charlotte for I guess four or five shows now over the last ten years. I think Charlotte is is interested in um, a dynamic um, mixture of music within her work. There are always tends to be moments that are really sort of beatsy and dynamic and really sort of almost sort of violent in their sort of rhythmical structures. There tends to be very still moments. There does tend to be moments that are sort of quite big, wide screen, cinematic, quite emotional. And in all the pieces I've done, we've had moments like this I sort of quite enjoy making those pieces which have strings and often choral elements as well. Typically with Charlotte uh, you know the first stage of the process is just generating material um, generating a palette of pieces um, with the mindset clearly that some of them will be interesting to her some of them won't be but that's fine um, but actually just generating some material slow material quiet material um, textural uh, elements uh, dynamic beatsy stuff, a whole array of different stuff just to bring to the table. So she's got a menu of things in addition to her own found material that she might have. She's got some original material of mine to play, to, 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 to try with certain things that she's developing. And you know, she, she might have a, a sequence that uh, she tries with just a drone. And then she tries exactly the same material with like a big disco piece or, you know, with some requiem strings, you know, and just to test out the water uh, of what works. So I think generating material is, is, is the first stage from my, from my point of view as a composer. It's, um, and that can often be very liberating because literally you just create a drop box and begin firing ideas in there. This is what I got basically. A folder of about nine songs that she had recorded with the Ukrainian refugees in Poland. Some solo material from boys like this guy, Maxime. One with an old, an older woman, 
which I find quite interesting. All these recordings had great um, sort of character to them, even even when they were slightly out of tune. I sort of enjoyed that. I've always enjoyed listening to people singing slightly out of tune in a lot of the work that I've done over the years. Um, because I think, you know, to to take these very humble voices and just sort of make something majestic out of them, you know, it's felt like a really interesting challenge. So, like, for example, the Maxime lullaby, I began to sort of play around with with what the, the key is, for example, to find the key. So I began to, in the key of C minor, A little touch of reverb and suddenly he's in a cathedral singing. Or he's in a, a, a space, you know. And then the sort of grandeur of, of strings. And then he, he drops out for a while and you've got an opportunity for an instrumental moment. I'm just sort of working completely instinctively musically, uh, following my nose, um, listening to the voice as a musical instrument. I don't understand the language. I don't. I have a little bit of a sense of what it's about, just purely down to the sort of nature of the song. I can hear it's like it's got a little bit of a lullaby quality, but I'm sort of very liberated at this stage. There is no dance to. I just I want to sort of just offer something musically to the to the table that feels quite grand. and quite emotional. And, 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 and knowing that, um, you know, this will resonate with something, something quite simple. On stage, this could work very well. And then also, if you remove his voice, you're left with a sort of instrumental version of this thing, which is very much um, inspired by the Ukrainian boy or the Polish boy, but it's uh, it's now existing on its own as a, another potential texture for the piece. Это лодка, это 
Obviously there's also um, need for something a bit more dynamic, often very rhythmical. Um, so in the stuff that Aurora sent for um, Hold Tight, this, you know, obviously, you know, it's got a little bit more of a rhythm going on. But it's actually a bit all over the place. There's no real solid rhythm. So I had to do a little bit of work in, in sort of just editing this a little bit and make it fit into a, a click track, basically. So this was a, a 173 BPM. It, it's still a little bit all, a little bit rough. So then I, I could begin to add um, some rhythmical elements to this. Just tried with a, a harpsichord. Uh, another harpsichord. Another harpsichord. Uh, some rhythmical tracks as well. With Charlotte tends to be like maybe a 10 week creation period. The first eight weeks of that, I'm working remotely, supplying her with material and then coming in um, usually once a week um, during that time. And actually it's been a brilliant um, um, working relationship. It's you know, a lot of the work that I do with her is remote, but when I, when I do come into the, to the studio and sit in the corner working with her, it's often in those moments that I come up with some of the, the more interesting work. But very much drawing upon the energy of the room, drawing upon conversations with her uh, about ideas. She often throws me sort of curve balls in terms of um, taking me out of my comfort zone. Uh, but because I'm there, I give it a go, and uh, often that can come up with surprising results, even for me. In shutdown, we were working with an organisation called Audio Active in Brighton, who were getting boys. They were rapping and, give, and contributing these sort of spoken word musical ideas for us. So we had this one. Hear the shit that they go through every single day, trying to demonstrate how to clear your brain when you're stressed out. I mean, this was a, an example where I could just begin to add a few effects and some rhythmic elements to this as well. You hear the shit that they go through every single day trying to demonstrate how to clear your brain when you're stressed out. See, you can see the man calling with his hood up and his head down. Why? Because it feels that if he doesn't puff up on a zest now that he might explode. Faith, why? Because I said so. So for Virgin Territory, Charlotte was uh, had been using Teenage Kicks by the Undertones in rehearsal space. And we're, you know, it's always a bit of a challenge when it comes to it because you get used to using certain tracks uh, in the rehearsal space and then you, you realise that you can't use them in performance for copyright purposes. But she wanted the energy of that and actually I think she, she, was, she really wanted to have Teenage Kicks because it is so um, emblematic to teenage sexual energy and whatever. So uh, I'm lucky enough to share this studio here, or this office space, with a good friend of mine, Steve, who's a guitar player. So he, we re-recorded the guitars, all the guitars from Teenage Kicks, and created a, you know, a, 
uh, a version of it that we could use. And I was able to sort of uh, play around, loop, loop the whole thing, just using the sort of opening riff. Ack itself, Teenage Kicks only lasts two and a half minutes. So I had to create something uh, in that style that really could sustain itself. Just looping it and building it and building it and building it. Um, so it became almost exhausting. So it's got this sort of relentless drive to it and it goes on and on and on. I think Charlotte's quite interested in that sort of um, endurance, you know, really getting into material and sustaining it for long periods of time. One of the features of Charlotte's work is using verbatim recordings that she's made of contributors. Like people, like boys and stuff, comment on things like that. Kids, so, parents, people in care that she's been in workshops with. She, she often has a, a whole palette of spoken word um, material, audio material, which um, needs to be incorporated into the into the work in some in some way. Be someone like bigger than me, they say. like can actually stand their ground, can actually deal with me. I was like, is that all you give them? So there's a whole editing process that goes on. Um, Charlotte might have you know five hours worth of interviews with people. Two of my brothers, two of them were in care as well for behaviour. They're in foster. All spoken language has got a melody to it as well. You know, as I speak to you, I'm, my voice is is creating a melody and a rhythm. So, with Charlotte's work, I find myself as much interested in the music within the voices that she gives me, the rhythm, the melody of those voices, as I am in the meaning. Your whole body just... I can definitely feel... It's like I've become just a point in my head. In terms of the meaning, she has an editorial sort of control over that. Because I don't, and because I'm flying with some other impetus, um, I think it sort of results in something that sort of has got a sort of muscularity to it. That's when you get a name. If you've had sex with every single one of them, or mates, mates, or do you know what I mean? That's how you get a name. If you've gone around and you're like, what, 13, 14? That's fair enough. Charlotte's work seems to be genuinely embedded within the community, although the work is artistic and dense. At its core, it's it's quite sort of political in that way. With it, she wants to reflect people's struggle and um, and bring it to the theatre, which is which is quite an interesting proposition. And in that respect, it's quite different to a lot of other work that I. Find myself doing.